So today let's explore this clamp meter donated by GVDA. It's a digital clamp meter, type GD166B, and there is some description of it or what it can measure. And I guess I have this one in the middle. It measures DC and AC voltages up to 600 volts, DC and AC current up to 600 amps, resistances up to 60 mega ohms, capacitances up to 60 millifarads, frequencies up to 10 megahertz, duty cycle temperatures, continuity test, diode test and CV life, 6000 counts, an analog bar, data hold, maximum minimum, backlight, flashlight, DC current zeroing. And it seems one of the types doesn't have a DC current, but my one has it. Smart automatic function, low battery indication, auto power off, true RMS. This is useful and it runs on three AAA batteries and it says category 3 600 volts. And these two types look very similar. I guess the difference is just in the shape of the clamps. But now let's open it of course. It's in this box and this nice housing. So let's open it and here's the clamp meter with the manual. And the cables or probes. And there also seems to be a thermocouple for temperature measurement, I guess. Looks nice. Does it have batteries in it? I guess it doesn't have. Let's take a look under the battery cover. I guess there are no batteries. Three AAA is it requires. Let's try rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries. I don't really like using single use batteries. I hope it will run on these and it already beeps. Let's close it. Let's put the screw back and let's test it. It's on, it says automatic and it shows the temperature it seems and here it indicates what does it measure? And I guess this blinking indicator indicates now it's in automatic mode and it can detect whether you measure amps, volts, ohms or continuity test. Let's check the control buttons. Function. This is probably the main button which switches all the functions. It seems so. And it can also go into automatic. Now it's automatic and then it goes through the individual functions. Maximum and minimum memory. It can I remember the minimum and maximum measured value I guess. In rush. DC, AC. So this is to choose AC or DC and it can also measure the in rush current. And for AC current sort of voltages it seems to also measure the frequency. And for DC it shows the temperature on the second display, See the resistance, this button doesn't do anything. You can again record the maximum and minimum, continue to test, diode test, millivolts, AC or DC, frequencies and duty cycles, capacitors, Capacitances, temperatures in Celsius and Fahrenheit, and an CV life. A long press to turn it on and off. And here is the hold button. Hold. And a long press for a flashlight here. And a long press again to turn it off. Let's try to stick the temperature sensor in it and test it and then let's test all the other functions using the probes. It seems to go here. And it also seems to have some internal temperature sensor. And when I insert this one I guess it switches to this one. Does it only switch to this one in the dedicated Temperature measuring mode. It's reacting. When I unplug it, does it switch back to the internal 
Yes, it's the internal now. And some temperature measurement comparison. 25.6, 25.8, very close. And this one is between 25 and 26. Not a bad accuracy. And now, of course, the probes for the multimeter or clamp meter. They have these covered tips for category 3 or higher, I guess. Nice. And these go here. And the tip covers say category 3, 600 volts. And the probes say 10 amps maximum. Some strain relief here. And when you remove the tip covers, it says just category 2, 600 volts. Now let's test the automatic mode. Putting it in a wall socket. 50 Hz, 237 volts. Comparing it to the other clamp meter I have. And this one has just 2000 counts, so it doesn't show the minus voltage with a 0 0.1 volt resolution like this one does. And let's try to connect it to a DC voltage in the automatic mode. And it's very close to this one. Let's try a higher voltage. And it seems to work nicely. In automatic mode again, it recognizes it's measuring a resistance and reducing the resistance and under 50 ohms it beeps and the switch is into a continuity check. And the resistance measurement seems to go up to about 60, 61 mega ohms. And just to compare the accuracy, the 330 kilo ohm resistor shows 326.8 and this one shows 327. And now let's try to measure the current using the clamp meter, of course. I'm putting it on a wire in a series with another clamp meter and also this multimeter. And I have some resistors in a series and connecting it to a bench power supply. And first let's test it using a low DC current. So let's see. And now it's in the automatic mode. Let's see if it recognizes it's measuring DC currents. 0 0.5 amps. And now it's probably recognized the DC current. But of course the automatic mode has some shortcomings. It only recognizes it's measuring a DC current above a certain threshold. And you probably also can't use the zero function for it. Or can you? Well, you can when the current is already there, but you have to zero it before the current is present. In the automatic mode, with no current present, the zero button doesn't work. So you have to switch it to DC current manually. Now it's manually in the current and the select button selects AC, AC in rush or DC. And then in the DC mode you can zero it out. So let's zero all the meters. And let's try how it measures low current. I'm testing it at 100 milliamps. And of course clamp meters are generally not very accurate and especially at low currents and especially at the DC ones. Not only they are not very sensitive but also in the DC mode it can be skewed by external magnetic fields, including the magnetic field of Earth. But it actually seems to do quite well at such a low current. Now it's almost 100 milliamps and it shows 0 0.09 amps. And there are some fluctuations. Trying to zero it all once more. Now it all seems to do better. Now testing it at one arm up. And this one actually does really well. And this one always tends to be a couple percent below for currents. And of course this one has one milliamp resolution but only goes up to 100 amps. This one has 10 milliamp resolution. One digit less resolution but goes up to 600 amps. And this is it at 2 amps, the maximum current of this bench power supply. And it's actually quite close. Now let's try a higher current, again zeroing it out. And the comparison at about 16 amps. And about 50 amps. Now let's try measuring high AC currents. For this I will use my DIY spot welder, made of a microwave oven transformer and connected to a Veyriac. Let's try to compare these two. 
87 versus 91, but I noticed this one always has a tendency to read a bit lower, so I guess this one is right. And this one only goes up to 100 amps, so I have no comparison for higher currents, but at least let's see it measuring values up to 600 amps. 200, 300 amps, 400 amps, 500 amps, and going over 600 slightly, and back. It measures up to about 609 amps. Nice! Now let's try a low AC current, basically just a lamp in a series connecting it to mains and... This time this one read is a bit lower, but of course it's mostly intended for high current, I guess. Let's try the maximum function. And it basically remembers the maximum. Let's try to measure the inner rush of the Veyriac when it's turned on. 14 amps. And it's of course different every time, depending on at which point of the sine wave you plug it in. Now just 3 amps. Very occasionally the Veyriac actually trips the breaker. Of course, plugging it in near the zero crossing is the worst case. It produces the most in rush. Now let's test the diode test. This is a Schottky diode, a normal silicon diode. Red LED is lighting up and measuring 1.6 volts voltage drop at low current. And a blue LED lighting up and reading 2.7 volts voltage drop. I guess it can measure voltage drops up to 3 volts. Now this combination is slightly over 3 volts and the LED still dimly lights up but it doesn't measure. And for some reason there is a dedicated millivolt measurement mode. Goes up to 600 millivolts. And it seems to be accurate. And then the frequencies. Shows about 50 Hz and also 50% the duty cycle. And now measuring 100 kHz coming from this ESR meter. And some capacitor measurements, 82 picofarads, read is a bit lower, measuring very low capacitance is a bit tricky, 470 picofarads, getting closer, 2.2 nanofarads, nice, 6.8 microfarads, nice, and 4700 microfarads, nice. The next one is the temperature measurement I already tested, and NCV life. Here you can switch life or NCV. This finds the life conductor. You're using just the red one and... For the life one it beeps. For the neutral it doesn't. And NCV, non-contact voltage detection. And I think I tested everything. Maybe the hold button is yet to be tested. Minus voltage, hold, and it stays on the display. But now, of course, the internals. Here is the battery screw and one more screw. So let's open it and see what's in it. There is one more screw here. Does it open now? And that was fast. And there is, I guess, some PTC thermistor for protection, some voltage divider resistors, several chips, a crystal transistor or voltage regulator, a lot of tiny resistors, capacitors. There's the relay, I could hear clicking. Here's the hold button. Some connection going to the whole sensor in the clamp part of it. Here's the beeper. Not much else in it. So that's the board from this side, but of course, let's take a look on the other side and also into the clamp now. Let's disassemble this screw. 
it will probably fall apart now. And there is another screw here. So let's unscrew this one as well. The clamp comes off. Falls apart. There is this wire going to the non-contact voltage detection, I guess, and this flat cable going to the whole sensor. And this part of it is just an iron core made of iron layers, I guess, and a spring and not much else in it. Maybe it's not easy to see, but it's made of layers, like an iron core of a transformer. And this thing doesn't easily open. I'm not sure should I open it. It might not come back together. I guess there is just an iron core and a small chip on this and nothing else. Basically the whole sensor and not much else to see. Here is the LED of the flashlight. And now let's try to remove this board. It's on multiple screws. Clicks in here and now it comes out. Here is the display with some rubber conductive rubber connections and this backlight connection cable I guess. And nothing else on the board. Just the pads for the display and for the buttons which are here. Well, I finally decided to pry this one open anyway. And here is the iron core made of iron layers glued in. And the whole sensor is on it, probably here, under this plastic cover. And here is the wire going to the antenna for the non-contact voltage detection. And removing this, and this might not go back together, but anyway. Here is the iron core with this connection. It seems to have two whole sensors, one on each end. Here is the whole sensor, and... The other one here. Let's try to make a better close-up of it, but there is really not much to see. Just a 4-pin SMD package. And the one on the other side of it. And now, of course, trying to put it back together time. And there is also some tiny calibration potentiometer here, and the battery is connected through these pads to these springs. And of course, when putting these self-tapping screws back into plastic, I turn it counterclockwise first until it clicks to find the original thread and then I screw it in and this prevents the fragile plastic thread from being completely shredded. And of course, four screws go through the board into the plastic display frame. You don't have to unscrew these. You can actually remove the board with the display still on it. And of course, if anybody is interested in the markings of the chips, one chip, another chip, this chip and the last chip, and this, I guess, a voltage regulator. So that's the meter back together. Let's test if it still works. And it still seems to be measuring right. So that's this interesting clamp meter from GVDA and there is a link to it in the description and if you like my videos please consider subscribing, supporting this channel on a Patreon or using the thanks button. And big thanks to all of you who already support me.